Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So today we're going to be talking about 5 tips for shooting 4K video. As many of you know, I recently got the iPhone 6S, which is helping me shoot 4K video for the channel. I also borrowed the Sony a7R II from our good friends over at Lumoid not too long ago. I have a review coming out on that soon, so make sure you stay in tune for that. But it taught me a lot about 4K video, and it taught me a lot about preparing and shooting 4K video, and I want to share my top five tips with you guys. So for those of you just getting started with 4K video, something you really need to take in consideration is having the right memory card. That's tip number one. For 4K video, you want an ultra high speed three memory card. That sounds a little complicated. You're thinking probably that don't I only need a class 10 memory card, something like a Lexar memory card like the ones I show on the channel. It depends on the card. You really need something a little faster. When you're shooting 4K video with an advanced camera, whether it's a DSLR or mirrorless camera, then you need to be able to have something capable of those fast read and write speeds, and it's a lot of data. We're talking about one gig, being equivalent to a minute. It's actually a little more than a gig. So you need the right memory cards. I'm recommending the Lexar 64 gigabyte as a minimum, probably leaning toward the 128 gigabyte, 1000 X card as the bare minimum. I really think you should go with the 2000 X. It has the speed that you really need for shooting 4K video. And for the size of files that we're talking about, 128 gigs is probably a good place to be. When shooting the 4K video footage that you guys saw here on the channel, I was actually using my 64GB 1000X Lexar card. Again, that is the bare minimum, so that's what I'm going to say is the point that you could get started with if you already have those cards. 4K video is an investment, so don't cheap out on the memory cards. Tip number two, you need proper software for editing 4K video. Can't stress this enough. You need something that's fully capable of handling 4K video. Recently, there was an update to iMovie that will allow it to edit 4K video. I honestly don't know how well iMovie can handle 4K video, and it will depend on your hardware. We'll talk about that in a minute. But with regard to software, my recommendation is going to be Adobe Premiere Pro. Depending on the specs of your machine, you might need to pre-render your timeline in order to edit it properly. So keep that in mind as well. You want to get a machine that has a dedicated video card and a lot of space and a high-end processor. Probably an i7. You could get away with an i5, but I would recommend the i7 in this case. Now, I did manage with the i5 and not having dedicated video in my laptop to edit the videos that I showed you guys here on the channel, but I had to pre-render the timeline in order to make that happen. For editing your 4K videos, I'm going to recommend Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Elements can handle it as well, so can Corel Video Editor, and of course Final Cut Pro. And as I said, if you have iMovie, the update now allows for you to edit 4K video, but I would recommend using some higher end software. This does in fact lead us to tip number three, having the right hardware. As I said, you're probably going to want to have a computer that has a dedicated graphics card, at least one gig in terms of the GPU power there. You might want something a little more robust. I'm going to recommend that you use something from NVIDIA wherever you can. So you want that for your laptop or your desktop if you're editing 4K video. The MacBook Pro, if you have a higher end one, has probably got you covered. If you're using the onboard graphics card from Intel, like the Intel Iris Pro with the MacBook at the entry level, you can probably get away with editing 4K video, but again, in Premiere Pro, you might have to pre-render this on the timeline. In terms of storage space, you're going to want a lot of it. Again, these files are massive. So if you're shooting 4K video for an extended period of time, you're going to need a lot of space for these huge files. Again, we're talking about over a gig per minute if you're using something like the Sony a7R II. In the case of the iPhone, the footage from that camera is about maybe 400 megabytes per minute. So again, this will vary from camera to camera, but the file size overall just tends to be huge. Tip number four, you'll need a monitor or some type of device that can play back 4K video so that you can properly monitor it and see what this is gonna be like for your end users. If you don't have the ability to watch 4K video, you're not gonna be able to see what your end user who is able to watch 4K video is really getting the experience of. So there's gonna be some difference between what you're seeing and what they're seeing, and that's not good. You wanna be able to know what you're putting out there. So I would recommend having some type of device or monitor that can play back 4K video. Apple does have um, a lot of things that will allow you to watch 4K video. Obviously, the 27-inch 5K Retina iMac, and now the new 21-inch 4K Retina iMac. 
So these are some devices that will allow you to get a sense of what your 4K video is looking like. The pixel density on some of the Apple mobile devices is not quite 4K, but it is up there and it might give you a sense of what these videos are looking like. So those aren't bad options as well. Obviously, you could play this back on a television that's Ultra HD and is capable of 4K video playback, so you could also use that as an option. My fifth and final tip for getting started in 4K video is 4K video captures every single detail, so be prepared for that. If you're you know, working in an environment that isn't 100% clean, guess what? Every single one of those details, every speck of dust, every scratch on a table is going to show up. All of your pores, all of your acne, if you're doing a beauty video, that's going to show up. So just kind of keep these things in mind and be prepared for the amazing and stunning detail of 4K video. There will be nothing that will be spared. You will see it all. So make sure that you're keeping that in mind. Also, I would say that you really want to pay more attention to stabilization because the motion and jarring things are going to be much more noticeable in 4K. So if you're taking the time and the trouble and the expense to shoot in 4K, make sure you're doing it right. Use stabilization gear. Use good lighting. There's no amount of 4K resolution that can make up for what's overall just a bad quality video in terms of lighting or movement or any of those things. So just make sure you're paying attention to the details. Well, I hope this helps you guys get started with 4K video. It's something I'm very excited about on the channel. I'm gonna be doing some more videos showing you my journey of getting started with 4K video. I'm not an expert, but I'm sharing everything that I'm learning as I learn it with you. So I hope that's helping you guys out. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. If you have questions about 4K video and getting started or you're trying out some 4K video equipment and you want some advice, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. I'll try and answer as many of your questions as I can. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching. And don't forget, create something awesome today. Maybe in 4K video.